This is section 7.2 called Areas in the Plane. There you see it, Areas in the Plane. Uh, let's take uh, f of x. Let's call this function f of x, that line, and a g of x underneath it, but yet positive. So we have two positive functions, uh, which means they're both above the x-axis. And, and let's say we want to find the area between the two curves from a to b. Well, to do that, we would find the area under f of x, so all of that area, and we'll do that with integration, of course, that's uh, area under the curve, and if we subtracted out the area under g, so all this area right here under g, what would be left, you know, subtracting is taking away, of course, what would be left is the area between the two functions. So to find the area between two functions, we would take the integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x dx. So let's say uh, the area under f of x ended up being 10, and the area under g of x ended up being, let's say, uh, 6. Well, then the area in between should be 4. Now, that's I think that's kind of obvious when it's positive, <clears throat> but that helps explain uh, this one. <clears throat> If we have f of x that's positive, and we have g of x that's, let's say, is negative, well, to find the area between the two, we'd have to add the, the area above the x-axis plus the area below the x-axis down here. Well, this, and this is g of x. But, uh, you know, this is negative area down here, and this is positive, but we'd end up adding the two to find the area between the curve. Well, if we integrate from a to b and we do f of x minus g of x, let's say this area was positive 10 again and this is negative 6. Well, the two areas should end up being <clears throat> 16. Well, if f of x is 10, then we're going to minus negative 6. That is like 10 plus 6, so that is 16. So the bottom line is you don't really have to worry too much about positive and negative area. If you take the top, this is the top function, minus the bottom function, it's going to take care of it for you. In example one, we're applying the definition. Find the area of the region between y equals secant squared x and y equals sine x from 0 to pi over 4. So we want to take, uh, well here it is graphed out, and we want to take the top function, which is actually secant, minus the bottom function, which is sine. So we're going to integrate from 0 to pi over 4 of secant squared x minus sine of x, or in other words, top minus bottom. The integral of secant x is tangent x, and the integral of negative sine x is positive cosine of x and we're integrating from 0 to pi over 4. So the tangent of pi over 4 plus the cosine of pi over 4 minus, that's pi over 4 plugged in, minus, now we have to plug 0 in, tangent of 0 plus cosine of 0. Well, the tangent of pi over 4 is 1 plus the cosine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2, Let's see, the tangent of 0, that's the point 1, 0, which is sine over cosine, which is 0, and the cosine of 0 is 1. So we have 1 minus 1, those cancel out, so the answer is the square root of 2 over 2. The area enclosed by intersecting curves. When a region is enclosed by intersecting curves, the intersection points give the limits of integration. In other words, we're looking at a parabola on this example too. Find the area of the region enclosed by the parabola 2 minus x squared, that's the top function, and the line y equals negative x. And they're saying that the intersection is going to define the integrals, the limits of integration uh, when we integrate. So we need to integrate this one from negative 1 to 2. The top function is 2 minus x squared and the bottom function is the line, so minus negative x dx. So now we're integrating from negative 1 to 2 of 2x minus, whoops, I am doing the integration. 
So now we're integrating uh, this function. We have 2x minus 1 third x to the third. And then that's going to be plus, so plus 1 half x squared. And we're evaluating from negative 1 to 2. Well, we plug uh, 2 in. So we have 4 minus 8 thirds plus, let's see, 4 divided by 2 is 2 minus. Uh, we have negative 2. That's going to be, that'll be a negative 1. So that means plus uh, 1 third. And then when we plug negative 1 here, we get plus 1 half. Well, let's see what we can do here. We have 4 plus 2 is 6. 6 uh, plus 2 is 8. 8 minus 8 thirds and then uh, minus 1 third. Oh, I can combine those two to make uh, negative 9 thirds, which is negative 3. And then plus, actually minus, minus 1 half. So we have 5 minus 1 half. So we have 4 and a half as an answer. Find the area of the region enclosed by the graphs of y equals cosine of x and y equals x squared minus 1. So let's uh, bring up our calculator. There we go, and we're going to move this over. We're going to put uh, 2 cosine of x in the first one, in y1, and x squared minus 1 in y2. And let's graph these and see what they look like. Here we're choosing the top function and the bottom function, and we need to get our limits of integration. So it looks like, um, let's go back to the graph. Cosine is going to be the top function, and here's the enclosed region right there, and the parabola is the bottom function. We need to, to get the, the limits of integration here. So let's go into second, calculate, and find out where they intersect. Now these are both even functions, so I won't have to do, uh, I won't have to find both of them. They're going to be the same on both sides. So we have negative 1.265424. Uh, and that's stored in X. And that's going to be negative, and then the positive is going to be positive 1.265424. But if I wasn't sure that these were even, I'd go ahead and find this other value. Now that value should be stored in X, so I should be able to quit out of here. I uh, go to math, number 9 is deriv uh, integration. The top function was cosine, so we have 2 cosine of x, uh, and then we're going to minus x squared minus 1, and I better put that in parentheses, because we have a minus minus. Well, I don't need to insert there. Uh, and we're doing this on the variable x, and we're going from x to negative x. Let's see if that works. 4.995 it says. 4.995 uh, should be our answer of the area. Let's look at example 4. It says uh, find an area using subregions. Find the area of the region R in the first quadrant that is bounded by y equals the square root of x and below by the x-axis and the line y equals x minus 2. Well, here's the graph of uh, what we're talking about where we have really... <coughs> I'm going to redo this one. Here's example 4, finding areas under uh, using subregions. Find the area of the region R in the first quadrant that is bounded above by y equals the square root of x and below by the x-axis and the line y equals x minus 2. Well, here's a graph of what they're talking about. There's uh, This line is the square root of x. This is the line x minus 2. And we're going to have to use an x, the x-axis as one of the boundaries. Well, the area, we need to get all of this area right here. Well, from 0 to 2, so to set up the integral, we have the integral from 0 to 2 and just the square root of x. And we need to add that to the integral from 2 to 4 of the square root of x. That's the top function now. Once you hit 2, you have a top and a bottom function. Square root of x minus x minus 2 dx. And that's from 2 to 4. 
Well, let's do the integration. We have uh, the integral of the square root of x. That's really x to the 1 half. So if we add 1 to that, that'll be x to the 3 halves and then times 2 thirds. So we have 2 thirds x to the 3 halves evaluated from 0 to 2. And then we're going to add that to 2 thirds x to the 3 halves minus 1 half x squared and then plus 2x evaluated from 2 to 4. Let's evaluate this now. We have uh, 2 thirds, 2 to the 3 halves, whatever that is, that's a decimal. And then minus 0 plugged in, so it's just minus 0. We won't worry about that. Well, then we have, if I plug 4 in here, the square root of 4 is 2, 2 to the 3rd is 8, 8 times 2 is 16. So we have 16 thirds minus, if I plug a 4 in here, that's 16. Half of 16 is 8. And then we have plus 8. Well, those two are going to cancel out. That's nice. Uh, now I have to plug 2 in. So 2, we have 2 thirds, uh, 2 to the 3 halves. If I plug 2 in here, that's 4 divided by 2 is 2, minus 2. And then we have plus 4. Well, we have this is going to cancel out with this one. The negative 8 and the positive 8 are going to cancel. So we have really uh, 16 thirds, and then we have minus, well, this is going to be negative 2 plus 4 is 2. So we really have minus 2, which is 6 thirds. So the answer ends up being 10 thirds. Here's example 5, integrating with respect to y. Find the area of the region in example 4, the one we just did, by integrating with respect to y. Finding area on using subregions. Well, that's example 4, and it tells us the equations. But instead of integrating with respect to x and having two separate regions that we have to add together, we could do one region because the line is to the right of y equals x squared the entire time. So instead of doing top minus bottom, we can do the right function minus the left function and accomplish the same thing, except now we're integrating with respect to the y's rather than the x's. So we're going to integrate from 0 to 2, and we're going to do right minus left, but they have to be, uh, they have to say x equal instead of y equal. Well, that's pretty easy for both in this case. We have x equals y plus 2 if you add the 2 over, and we have x equals y squared uh, for the other equation. Now the right one is the line, so we have y plus 2 first, y plus 2, and then minus uh, the left function, which is y squared. So we have y squared. Now let's integrate and see if we get the same answer, because it's the same area. Well, the integral of y is 1 half y squared plus 2y, and then minus 1 third y to the third, and we're integrating from 0 to 2. So we have 4, uh, 1 half of 4 is 2 plus 4, and then we have minus, well 2 to the third, or 2 to the third is 8, so we have minus 8 thirds. Well that's 6, which is 18 thirds, minus 8 thirds, which is 10 thirds. We get the exact same answer. And I only evaluated 2 because if you plug a 0 in here, this is all really minus 0. But the point being, we can integrate with respect to x or y, and we'll get the same answer, 10 thirds on both. But if you do, uh, integrate with respect to x, you're doing top minus bottom. When you're integrating with respect to y, it's going to be right minus left. In example 6, we are making the choice. Uh, it says, find the area of the region enclosed by the graphs of y equals x to the third and x equals y squared minus 2. And the choice we need to make is, are we going to integrate this with respect to x and use top minus bottom, or are we going to integrate this with respect to x, with respect to y and integrate right minus left? Well, let's use our calculator to look at these two graphs. Well, our calculator only takes uh, uh, y equals. So we already have y equals x to the third, but this needs to say y equals. So we have y squared plus, uh, well, we have y squared equals y squared equals x plus 2, and then square root both sides. So we have plus or minus the square root of x plus 2. So we have this equation right here, y equals, and this equation right here, y equals. Let's plug those into the calculator and, and see that we have the x to the third, and this is actually a parabola. 
So we have x to the third and plus the square root of x plus 2 and negative square root of x plus 2. Now when we graph, there we have x to the third and then you're going to see a parabola develop. Well, it'd be much easier to integrate right minus left because x to the third is to the right of the parabola the entire time. So we're going to integrate with respect to y. Now, the, the x to the third is the right, the parabola is the left. So we want to integrate. This is the right function and this is the left function. And we're integrating with respect to y, so we need these to say x equals. So this one is going to be x equals the third root of y, and this one is already in the form that we want. Now remember, the parabola was the left function. So we have the third root of y minus y squared minus 2 dy. But now we need our two limits of integration. And we're going to use the calculator to find their intersection. But remember, we're, in, we're integrating with respect to y, not x's. So we need the y values uh, in this case. So we go to intersect. Uh, here's the first equation I want. I actually do what the second one. We can get the top one first. Press enter, and our y value is 1.793 and then 0037. So how about we use that entire number? Let's see if I can remember that. Uh, 1.793037, so we get an accurate uh, answer when we actually do the integration. And then I need the, the lower uh, limit. We did the upper one first. Intersect. Uh, let's see, I want this function again, x to the third, but I don't want this one. I want uh, the third one, so I arrowed down to get to the third equation. Press enter. Those are the two that I want the intersection of. Here's the intersection point, and the y value is negative 1. Negative 1. Now I'm going to use the calculator to finally do the actual integration. We're going to integrate this using the calculator, so we go math number 9, and we have uh, the third root's already in here. There's the third root. There's the any root. So number four is the third root. We can use any letter we want, and it's much easier to use the x rather than integrating with respect to y on the calculator. R even though we're, we're integrating with respect to y, we can use any variable we want to get the actual value. So we have x squared minus 2, uh, and then the variable x negative 1 to 1 1.793037 and it'll give us the answer we are looking for. Still thinking. Four point two one five rounded. Four point two one five.